So Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway has finally opened and we have an in-depth analysis of this brand new attraction. So stay tuned for all of that. Up next! Uh -huh. This video is sponsored by Mickey Travels, a platinum level authorized Disney vacation planner which can take the hassle out of all of your vacation planning. So visit the link in the description box to get your free quote today. Hi there Waltoners, I'm Jack and this is of course DSI Newscast and before we get started with discussing the intricacies and the details of the technology that make up this ride, we must first understand why this ride is so important and that requires a little bit of history. As the opening of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway marks the first time in the history of the Disney parks that the mouse that started it all has received his very own ride through attraction, which is kind of unbelievable to think about. But that isn't to say that Mickey hasn't been featured in other types of attractions in the past, as when Walt Disney World opened in 1971, it boasted the Mickey Mouse Review in Fantasyland. That was a musical show with Maestro Mickey conducting 86 audio animatronic figures in concert, although much of the focus of the show was on the multiple Disney classics represented in animatronic form. But then some 20 years after that attraction's closure, Mickey made a return to the same location, with Mickey's Phil our magic in 2003. However, this time, despite the name indicating that this would be Mickey's time to shine, it was in fact a 4D show that had Donald Duck as its main star. Therefore, after all of these years, Mickey being overlooked in the two attractions that have featured his name. That now brings us to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which is finally here to rectify all of this and honor the nine decade history of Mickey Mouse. Now at this point, I just want to offer a very quick spoiler free review, as I would say that Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is essentially the new gold standard of a classic fantasy land dark ride that's going to be suitable for all ages, as it utilizes cutting edge technology to update the vision stylings of Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin, mixed with a similar zany energy and crazy storyline reminiscent of Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, all whilst being combined with an infectious, hummable theme akin to Yo-Ho A Pirate's Life For Me or Grim Grinning Ghosts. But now before we dive into some in-depth analysis of this attraction, I just want to first recommend some vlogs by Michael K and Jackie at Super Enthused, which have both done a really amazing job of capturing the excitement of the media a preview of Michael K and the opening day by Jackie. So go check them out in the description box down below. But now let's discuss Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Oh boy! As first of all, it goes without saying, but the biggest standout has got to be the absolutely groundbreaking projection mapping that's been coupled with a breakthrough in the technology's implementation. As it goes far beyond just enhancing show scenes as we've seen in past attractions like Frozen Ever After and Narve River Journey. But instead, the evolution of this technology has proven that digitally painting an entire attraction is not only possible, but also incredibly effective. However, what's the most astounding aspect out of all of this is the fact that the projection mapping is not limited to fixed positions or non-moving objects, but instead it can dynamically track in perfect synchronization, as we can see here with Mickey and Minnie, multiple moving set pieces, which wasn't even achievable a few years ago. And all of this is thanks to the partnership between Walt Disney Imagineering and Panasonic, which began in 2012 with the opening of Radiator Springs Racers, as the internal projection systems brought to life the automatronic Cars characters. But then in 2014 and 2016 respectively, this internal projection process was then miniaturized to digitally animate facial expressions in Seven Dwarfs Mind Train and Frozen Ever After. Now of course this projection technology isn't without its drawbacks, as the digital painting effect can sometimes appear flattened and washed out on camera. However, these attractions have not been designed to be viewed through the camera lens, but instead are to be enjoyed in person by the guest actually on the attraction. But already this technology has come such a long way since 2012 that the overall luminosity of these projections still makes it extremely easy to capture. And the reason why I'm highlighting this point so much is because this marks the beginning of projection mapping transcending the traditional attraction experience. 
as digitally painting the sets is not only more cost effective, but also opens up many more possibilities for interchangeable media. Thus, as we see this technology integrated with many old and new attractions alike, it means that the frequency to which Imagineering can offer enhancements and overall refreshes to these attractions will increase whilst also simplifying the process and reducing the refurbishment time. Which if you think about it, this technology helps enable Walt Disney's sentiment that the Disney park should never be finished and should always be in a state of becoming. Although I will issue this one warning. And that is, integrating more technology like this can also be a double-edged sword, as the accelerating rate of technological change can quickly make past technology look antiquated and out of date. But now coming back to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, this attraction is a brilliant example of when a heavy reliance on screens has been done right, which I personally think that Universal Studios' Fast and the Furious ride could take some notes from. And that's because this isn't just screens alone, but it's also 2.5D projections, which means that there is a level of physical depth to the projection surface, and even includes dynamically folding and shape-shifting screens to accommodate new projection mapping objects. As can be seen here with a factory frenzy scene, transforming back into Runamuck Park, with a furnace changing into a carousel, and the folding trees along with the walls being lowered. Which if you think about it from an animation history perspective, this multi-layer screen based approach to the projection mapping is basically the same technique used in Disney's multiplane camera from the 1940s, which allows you to have a level of depth within 2D animation. And building on top of this layered technique are subtle elements like the painted black ceilings that have a gradual fade at the edges of the background sets that help focus your attention onto the show scenes. But this wonderfully wacky cartoon aesthetic is also ingrained throughout every aspect of the attraction, as it may seem like Walt Disney Imagineering may have forgotten to string together a distinct narrative, but this was by design, as this collection of illogical scenes and scenarios accurately replicates the same vibe of the new Mickey Mouse shorts that jump from one environment to another without any logical reason. And yet all of this is brilliantly reinforced through tying together the beginning and the end of the experience by having the guests enter and exit through the movie screen back into the theatre environment. Now up until this point I've only spoken about the projection technology and also the 2.5D screens, but the attraction also has some audio animatronic figures integrated along with many physical set pieces that uses a specialised painting method that blends beautifully with the projection elements. But much in the same way that the car's animatronics are referred to as automatronics, I would call these new type of figures projection matronics. As traditional animatronics aim to replicate real world dynamics and movements, all whilst being restricted to the size of real world objects. Whereas these new type of limited movement audio animatronics rely upon the projection for much of the expression that would usually require numerous electric actuators inside the body of the audio animatronic, as can be seen here with the Nave River Shaman in Pandora the World of Avatar, or Hondo Anarka in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. But that isn't to diminish these audio animatronic figures, as Daisy in the dance scene is absolutely fantastic, as that figure has full body movement. Now the obvious difficulty with these projection matronics is that they are bringing 2D characters into a 3D world, as the circular shape appears too round, and also flat at the same time. But in the interest of balance, I also have a few criticisms of the attraction as well, with the first being the use of a Paul Ruddish animation style. That is absolutely fantastic for the set design, backdrops and projection effects, but in my opinion it doesn't translate well to the character design for these types of animatronics. And this could easily have been rectified as the traditional 2D Mickey Mouse design is already recognised and accepted by all generations as being a suitable 3D variation of this iconic 2D character. And in addition to this, if the classic character design had been used, then it would also remove the disparity between how Mickey looks in this ride versus the design of the in-park character as well. But then again, Mickey Mouse is such a geometrically defined character, it probably doesn't make too much of a difference either way. And then the other areas where I think this attraction could be improved is the rear projected holographic Goofy within the train engine, which is a very nice effect as it brings part of the story to the right vehicle. But the downside is that it appears to be too two-dimensional against the physical space behind it. And as you turn the corner into the tunnel, if you're at the back 
of the ride vehicle, then you miss a critical story point for why Goofy disappears and the train breaks apart into a runaway railway. Now of course, with Rise of the Resistance and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway opening within a few months of each other, they're sure to be compared to one another. Which I don't think is going to be completely fair, as Rise of the Resistance is an ultra immersive cinematic attraction that was always designed to have three different ride systems integrated into the Star Wars experience. Whereas Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway always set out to be a ride first and foremost. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't successfully immerse you within the cartoon world, which it definitely does. So with all of that, it's easy to see that Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is sure to be a huge hit. Which I think is because of a number of factors, as it has huge rewritability, which is thanks in part to the different track variations, which is the beauty of trackless attractions like this. And then you've also got the fact that every time that you ride, you're going to be seeing something new, as it's such a media rich environment, chopped full of little easter eggs and hidden mickeys. But in my opinion, the single biggest reason for why this will most likely be such a successful attraction is not only the high capacity, which it is rumoured to handle up to 3,600 people per hour, but it's the simple fact that it's been designed for the entire family, with no height requirement for children, and yet it's also a passive attraction experience for the older generations to enjoy as well. And so if you combine all of that together with an infectious song and the highly detailed theming of the cartoon world that begins in the pre-show and is carried through to the exit, then I think it's pretty easy to see that Disney has an instant classic on their hands, which will be a guest favourite for many years to come. But now, it's over to you Walton is. I would like to know what are your thoughts and opinions on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and also if you could see this 2.5D advanced projection technology brought to any existing attraction or an entirely new attraction, then what would it be, and also the reason why. And of course, don't forget to put the timestamp for where the hidden Mickey appeared somewhere in this video along with your suggestion or your comment to be on the chance to win one of these official DSMI News cast enamel pins. And congratulations to this Waltzner here for me this suggestion from a previous video where we're talking all about the new CEO of Disney, Bob Chapek. And so that's it for today, so be sure to go ahead and subscribe down below if you're new to this channel. Hit that notification icon so that you always receive an update whenever I release new videos, which is usually on a Tuesday and a Thursday. And also if you've enjoyed today's video all about Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, then be sure to give this video a massive thumbs up as it really does help this channel out. And I've been Jack, You've been you, and I'll see you real soon.